Have your prospects said they'd work with you, but haven't sent you any business? Have you built relationships with some that have even set you up as a vendor, but days or weeks later, you're still waiting for that first load? Well, stick with us as I explain why they aren't and what you can do to turn these almost prospects into profitable customers. I'm Benjamin Kowalski with Freight360, where we provide the latest transportation, sales tips, and training videos to help you reach your goals faster. If you're a fan of the content, please support us by crushing that like button and sharing us with all of your colleagues. For more info on our Freight Broker course, Freight Broker Basics, be sure to click the link in the show notes or go to freight360.net for more free training material. Let's assume you've been making your calls day in, day out consistently. You're averaging three to 500 calls per week. And let's also assume that you've been doing this for a few months. I have an agent that is in exactly this situation right now, okay? He has about eight or nine prospects that have either said they would onboard him or work with him. However, he's only moved a couple loads. What's the problem, right? And what can you do to crack a problem like this if this is what you're experiencing? Well, he keeps asking himself if he should quit, maybe find another career, do something different. Sound familiar to anyone? Great, well stick with me because I'm gonna tell you what you should be doing so that you can close more of them. Now, where we're gonna start is when you're back or when you've started prospecting, maybe you just have, right? But you're gonna be spending about 75% of your time making phone calls and the other 25% of your time sourcing leads, meaning finding points of contact, phone numbers, and importing them into your CRM. Once you've got that process down, you should be averaging about 70 calls per day especially if you don't have anything else on your plate. Most of the successful brokers we've worked with start hitting about 100 calls a day. But again, they don't have any other responsibilities at this point. I averaged about between 80 and about 120, depending on the week and how many other loads I might've had to move. But at a bare minimum, I was hitting 400 outbound phone calls per week. Now, if you can honestly say that you've been doing that consistently for at least two months, then you've likely made it to the same place. You have maybe one or two or maybe a handful of prospects that have either sent you some lanes to quote or have sent you their shipper agreement to be set up. And that's great, right? But that's good news and you should celebrate it. If this was a football game and your team has driven all the way down the field to the red zone, you're within 20 yards and you really just need to punch it into the end zone from here. Now, what I wanna talk about is what is the difference, right, in play style? between scoring a touchdown and driving down the field from the other end zone. It's really how much of the field you have to play with. The more the field you have, the more options you have that you can try different things. You can run the ball, you can throw the ball, short or long, and many different options in between that really force that defense to guess what you're gonna be doing. It's no different in prospecting. When you start prospecting or contacting a prospect that you've never talked to or met before, I want you to remember that they don't know you and they don't trust you and they have no reason to spend any time away from what they need to do at their job to get to know you. Remember, right, it's important that they talk to you at first, right? It's just taking them away from their job responsibilities. So you have to kind of tread lightly, meaning you want to call someone you just met maybe every day to hang out, right? Or someone you wanted to date long term. Calling them daily, right, or every few days will just probably make them want to avoid you more. So you play the long game and you reach out every week or every two weeks and you do your best to connect with them and get to know them, to learn about them. Sometimes maybe it's a personal topic that you guys discuss, like maybe what they did last weekend. Sometimes you're connecting over an industry topic, like a tight area in the shipping market in an area of the country, right? that they're really having difficulty getting a truck or securing capacity. Now, once you've connected once, right, you're gonna wait a week or two and you do that whole process over again. Just a big cycle. Now, once you've connected with them enough times over usually a month or two, now they believe and trust you enough to get you maybe set up as a vendor or they'll send you a load or two from time to time to see if you can help with their usually most difficult situation. And that's also great news, right? 
But here's the rub. If you're still calling them every other week, right, you're now out of sight, out of mind, when a lot of these issues they really need help with are probably happening. And knowing, again, how our industry works, they're likely having problems at least a few times a week. And if they aren't thinking about you as a viable option to help them, they're just gonna keep going back to their other brokers. This is the behavior that we really need to change. And just like in the red zone, you have to push closer and closer to the end zone until you actually score, right? Or are working together in this example. Meaning, shorten the time in between your calls to every other day or maybe every three or four days. Because the more frequently you are speaking with them, the more likely they are to call you when they have a late truck or one that maybe didn't show up at all. You need to be following up, okay, about loads that you've quoted but didn't even win and you didn't move for them, just asking them, right? So you're gonna call them maybe when a load you quoted was supposed to deliver and ask them, hey, how did it go? Ask them if there was anything else they wished could have been handled better. This is how you're moving closer and closer to operating like their other brokers. Because even if you're not moving loads yet, because you are showing them with your actions, most importantly, and your follow-up, how you would be working if you were their broker. This is your best way to show them how you're actually different than the other brokers and the other options they've been using. And the more you do this, the more likely you are to be top of mind when the next opportunity arises for you to actually help. A good rule of thumb when executing the strategy is to think about how often their loads or their orders are changing and match that time frame with your follow-ups. For example, if a shipper gets all of their new orders for their truck loads once a week on Tuesday, for example, following up only on Fridays isn't gonna be very helpful you would want to call them on Monday or at least Tuesday to see how things maybe went last week and ask if they might need a hand this week. For that example, I would probably call them on Thursdays to see how things went on Tuesday and Wednesday and then again on Monday regarding the upcoming week. If you have a shipper that gets new orders maybe every single day, you would wanna follow up with them every single morning and possibly the end of every day to ask how things went that day and to ask or to see if anything or any loads were pushed last minute and might be picking up now the following morning. This will help you position your follow-ups far more effectively than randomly calling. Using this technique of shortening the time in between your follow-ups will drastically increase your chance of moving loads with them. One word of caution though, you don't want to call a prospect every day until you are close enough to the goal line or the end zone, right? So you wanna make sure that you wait until you've reached the red zone in the sales cycle, which means they are either sending you load details for your help or they have set you up as a vendor in their system. For more tips on building successful freight brokerages, check out our website, freight360.net. For more information on our freight broker course, Freight Broker Basics, where you'll learn everything you need to know to earn a living as a freight broker and what it takes to build a successful freight brokerage.